My family never had a TV when I was a kid, so instead of clamoring for some product from a commercial, I always asked them to buy games and stuff for our computer. They usually refused, but I took matters into my own hands. I was amazed at how people would just make stuff and give it away online. This game, Cave Story, was made by a Japanese university student and released for free, and it became a cult classic. I started eating up all kinds of free stuff from the internet. This was my favorite cartoon when I was a kid. It's called Homestar Runner. I watched it because it lived online, not on TV. Your pathetic conversation pales in comparison to the one you're about to be a part of. Oh, great. I can't wait. I'm finally committed to it. I've talked about it for years, but I'm finally moving forward. When I started thinking about it, though, I didn't understand why people would just give away their creations. Like... How do they pay their rent? Why is there so much free stuff on the internet? And then I got to college and took an economics class, and it all started making sense. The textbook showed graphs where, as the number of units produced increased, the costs of producing rose higher and higher, until they overcame the revenue generated and production ceased. But online, costs of production do not rise, like... No one has to pay anything if I download another copy of a song, for instance. I already paid my internet bill, and the person who wrote the song didn't have to pay to make it available online. So if someone has the equipment and skills to produce something, there's no limit to the audience they can reach. YouTube has generated hundreds of stars, most of whom got famous recording simple videos with webcams or cheap video cameras. Even though most people don't have the equipment and wherewithal to produce something for free, anyone who does can quickly become a large part of our media culture, because it's hard to compete with a price of zero. But there's been a big pushback by the recording industry against all the free sharing going on online. Just like free content, anything that's sold online can also be shared for free, so their profit margins have been significantly eroded as the internet has grown. Recently, the bills SOPA and PIPA were brought up in Congress by the recording industry. They were heralded as anti-piracy bills, designed to prevent copyright infringement. They placed ridiculous new responsibilities on websites like Google, YouTube, and Twitter, and threatened to censor their whole website if they failed to comply. So sites like Wikipedia and Tumblr began urging their massive user bases to speak out against the bills, with some going so far as to black out the entire site. And within days, congressional support for the bills crashed down in a landslide. As I see it, the recording industry is running into tough competition from both pirated media and original freebie media alike, and they're trying to stamp out both. But I would say to them, tough. I don't think there's any reason to try to eliminate free information sharing at all. Because even if money gets less and less involved and the industry dies, the massive efficiency of the internet means that we will all have instant access to anything anyone creates. And all kinds of stuff already gets made, regardless of the money. Most of my favorite media productions were never intended to be sold. They were made to be shared. For example, my favorite band. For the, for the small minority of the people who are here, who don't know about the music industry and aren't really pissed off right now. Um, what we do is all of our songs are available for free on bondthemusicindustry.com. We've got three albums up there. And we do it. And you guys to uh, And you want to donate money. That means we get to eat tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The city subway station's never glistened. And even though most bands don't go completely donation-based, almost every new band has their music available on sharing sites like YouTube, SoundCloud, and Bandcamp, where anyone can listen for free. And the same trend is happening with video games. I have my own credit card now, but if I want to play what everyone else is playing, I don't necessarily have to use it. One of the most popular games right now, League of Legends, is free to play. 
The company behind it makes money by charging gamers for aesthetic customizations of their avatars. You can't get an unfair advantage by paying money, so most people don't. But with 32 million players registered worldwide, enough people pay to make it massively profitable. So really, I don't think we need copyright anymore. It's practically impossible to enforce online anyway, and so much sharing-based media is being created that if things keep going the way they are, it won't be long before copy-protected content is actually in the minority.